Uh, this is your captain speaking. Please prep your grav couches and get ready for the juice because we're about to flip and burn and head back into the expanse. This will be a high G manoeuvre. I'm Andy, and as ever, I'm joined by uh, the fantastic co-host, the one, the only, the indomitable, Mr. Elton McManus. How are you, sir? I'm not too bad, mate. Not too bad. I'm glad, glad to hear it. Still coming down from last week's episode. I can say it's, last it's, week's because it's been like a week since I've seen the expanse. Yeah, we're, we're releasing these weekly, but unless you'll listen to this in the future when you're just listening to them one after the other... So, but yeah, yeah, it's it's been a week since we've um, since we that. So yeah, we're we're much like uh, Vitachi. We've kind of cut our motors and we're just tumbling another piece of space debris to just have a little collection of our thoughts and have a chat uh, about the latest episode. Back to the butcher. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Although I'd, I'd like to say just to, to give ourselves a little pep up, I mm-hmm. had some uh, uh, what are they called Me- the memories on the Facebook. And oh, yes. two of them popped up this week with us doing From the Earth to the Moon, where we did Apollo 13, <laughs> and Band of Brothers. And we were like one episode into it now. Yeah. <laughs> and we're already, we're, this is the fifth episode of this. We're, we're, we're well, well ahead, ahead of, of things. It's true. Although, I think when this drops, it will be a week from now. Yeah, so. that's true, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> I don't care where we're recording. We're like four weeks ahead of where we were on them. It's, it's true. It is. Absolutely. Although on the downside, and it's only a little downside, but it's, well, it's not even really a downside. It's an outside. Both of those shows only had one season each. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> there there are just, decisions to be made, aren't there? The, 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 let's just say there's going to be uh, production uh, discussions taking place in a couple of weeks to figure out the future. But that's in the future. We're in the here and now, or maybe we're in the past. We'll find out. Mm. But as I said, we're here to talk about Back to the Butcher. Uh, as is tradition, here's the brief synopsis for the episode. Holden and the crew make a deal with an unlikely ally on Tycho Station. Along with his conspiracy theories about Julie Mao, Miller's obsession with a missing girl intensifies. Nice. So what did you just just brief summation of what did, what did you think of this episode? Because it's it's quite a it's quite a step down, I think it's said to say, from CQB. You know, it's it's, it's that moment of pause after the action isn't it yeah this is waiting for the ripples to subside from last week's episode this is the calm after the storm it is and it is is a step down but it's in the right direction and every season on every tv show has this sort of thing where you have like a big either grand finale or mid-season finale or something in the middle or just something big that goes on big set piece and then you have to you have to balance that don't you and you so, have to have the quiet moments because if you hmm. keep the adrenaline up all the time you just become immune to it yeah and it becomes the norm and then you're waiting for the next big thing to happen and it has to be a lot bigger we need a roller coaster and we're getting it and now we're on the the down curve no we've already had mm-hmm. like the, the the fun down bit yeah we, so we're, we're, we're back on the thing going up to to another and, 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 and we're going up on the esca- on the roller coaster yeah so. going towards another <laughs> peak we're clicking away it's that yeah, clicky yeah. horrible thing <laughs> it was but this i don't think was a horrible episode i i quite enjoy this episode it, yeah. it's 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 a bit different from anything we've seen so far um i think this is the first time we've not done anything on earth at all no there wasn't anything was there no we don't go anywhere near uh the inner sphere this time we're, we're doing all our stuff uh, out uh, out in the rim oh uh, in the past but we'll get to that in a second uh should we start on series so yeah. seems like a good place to start let's go for it yeah so so we picked up last time but havelock is still alive mm. after having a spear uh, up his jacksy <laughs> and arrow mounted to a wall uh, miller doesn't seem overly impressed that he's alive um and i quite like uh, uh, when when the woman walks in and he looks at her and she goes, "Please tell me she's just a get well soon gift to yourself." You know, he's a bit of an arsehole, is old Miller. <laughs> he's a little bit, but then again, he's he's got his partner who's laying in mm-hmm. bed now, and yep. goodness knows how he survived that. Once again, missed all vital organs. It's it's true. It, all, all the vital organs in his upper because I mean, you see where that patch is. It looks almost like it went straight through his heart. Mm, that's through the bre- uh, breastbone, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> it must be hang on a minute well i was gonna say if this was pulp fiction you know, you'd have to really ramp up to get that thing in there <laughs> <laughs> but it, there's lots of power problems on there as well where they are yeah series uh it's definitely 
you know, kind of falling down a little bit. Um, I mean, it, it's always seemed a bit run down, like people don't really care. When we know there's the water shortages. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know this for a fact, but the impression I get is it's almost um, Anderson Dawes and the OPA just kind of flexing their muscles a little bit. Just, you know, you know, the the, uh, the, the earth, the inners, the earthers might be in charge and running the place. But it's it's the belters and the OPA, which are actually running the machines. Mm, definitely. So I, want, I wonder if it was almost, um, you know, a little bit of civil disobedience there. Just kind of just reminding them that, you know, we're still here. OK, so you think this is more like the um, where they had the problems with the air scrubbers earlier on as well? This mm-hmm. is just a, well, you know, we can give you power if we really want to and we can take it away just as quickly. I, th- I think there was more to it than it's just the station is worn out and, you know, a bit run down. Mm. Uh, don't know that for a fact. Uh, I don't recall that for a fact anyway. But given, uh, you know, the other story we see throughout on Anderson Station and the messages going out for that and given the conversation that Dawes later has with Miller in the bar when he when he says about how, you know, well, what I just said, you know, the Earthers, you know, they run the place, but we run the place. Yeah. You know. Um, so, yeah, I just kind of uh, I think something like that might be uh, what's going on there. Yeah. I don't know whether this Havelock is he's still learning the language, isn't he? Once again, I forget the name he, of the language. Yeah. Belta Crioli, and that reminds me, we actually had a little bit of uh, feedback, if you will, or at least you know a, a message sent to me oh, okay. uh, from Murray Christiansen. Yeah, uh, and he pointed out something um, which makes a lot of sense and informs kind of what is uh, the language is about. A lot of it's um, kind of derived from ha- the hand signals you might get uh, from being from working in a scuba suit or uh, a space suit, as the case may be. Yeah, I That's saw why this. There's so yeah. many hand gestures, you know, so. A lot of the language, it's not just words, but it's hand gestures as well. So, you know, if you need to, you know, kind of convey across to someone that, you know, OK, thumbs up or stuff like this or things. So, you know, a nod of a head or a nodding motion with a raised fist, um, you know, it, it, it's just kind of communicating through body language as well as through um, just words and things like that. Well, Murray said, if you're in a space suit or a scuba suit or anything like that, you have to be a bit more deliberate with your hand signals as well, don't you? Yeah, yeah. It's because, you know, a slight nod of the head or anything like that doesn't mean anything if you're in a bulky suit. Mm. So you, you, you need to make sure it's very, very clear that people can understand what you're trying to say. Yeah, no, I, I like that. See, that's well building. It's well yeah. building. I love it. I'm kind of curious, actually. Um, are you any interest whatsoever about doing um, uh, the books once we've finished all of this? Because they go a lot more into a lot more detail of that sort of stuff in the books. Mm-hmm. So just just kind of curious, you know, has, has what you've seen in the first five episodes of the first series made you go, "Ooh, I might want to see the book for that." I uh, yeah, I am interested. It, I, 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 I know what I'm like book, though. I haven't done the books yet because I want to experience it as the TV show first. Mm-hmm. So when the show's finished, then I'll go and read the books afterwards. Yeah. Yeah, I'm interested, but I know what I'm like. I'm I'm so rubbish with books. <laughs> I really am. I I need to be on holiday or on a long journey to read a book. Yes. Otherwise, if I'm joys, around the joys house, of audible. <laughs> well, yeah. If if I'm around the house, then there's always something else to do apart from read a book. Mm-hmm. That that is when I'm in when I'm retired. Yeah, as if that's going to happen. <laughs> in my 70s, sat down with a nice cup of tea, cat purring on my lap, and then I go, I have books. Ah, okay, let's go for this. There's, there's time now. Yes. There was time. <laughs> <laughs> ah, anyway, let, 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 let's steer this ship back towards uh, the episode. Yeah. Uh, in all series, uh, we see Star Helix are hunting down the uh, the guys who mounted Havelock to the wall. Mm-hmm. Um, there's definitely that kind of, uh, you know, you don't mess with, don't mess with the cops, uh, where you have, um, you know, you know, go and find this guy, you know, if he, if he was to fall down some stairs, that's fine. And, you know, if he was to fall out of an airlock, well, shit happens. That's cool. <laughs> that's, that is so much like the president out of BSG. 
Oh, yeah, just, oh, just yeah. throw them out the airlock. <laughs> Be all right. Yeah. That's so, yeah, I, I like that. That's that's very cold blooded. It, it's you don't, you know, we look after our own. Mm. So so they're definitely taking it personal. But Miller's very kind of uninterested in it, isn't he? Well, I, I think he's seen Havelock. He's probably still pissed at him. Mm-hmm. I get the we get the feeling because he's been in that room and he he's had a bit of a dig him. He's still pissed, and he can see that. It's it's one of them things where you think, oh god, I hope he's all right. Oh yeah, he's all right. Now I'm angry with you. And so I think he's going through that emotion. And I think he might also be angry with himself. Maybe, yeah, because he sent him over there, didn't he? Or let him go over there. Well, he least. let him go over there, which was pointed out. And also, you know, the kid's new on the job. He's supposed to be looking out for him. So, yeah. so maybe there's a little bit of self-loathing going on there. Maybe, yeah. So to distract him from that, he's kind of thrown him into the Julie Mao story. Well, he was, he's, he's already kind of well and truly obsessing with uh, old Julie at this point. Mm. Uh, but he's making progress. Um, you know, he learns the name uh, Anubis. Uh, and, uh, you know, he's um, tracking the flight pan. Uh, and, you know, we get to see his cool little uh, 3D lounge computer set up there again. Yeah, um, I want and, one of and, them. And it, oh, very much so. And we, we can see that the Scopuli's flight path would have taken it to intercept uh, the Anubis flight path. Yeah. So he's kind of like, okay, so something's going on here. We also hear that the Anubis left Phoebe. Uh, and as we know from last time out, the Doninger arrived at Phoebe and everyone was dead. It was wiped out. Is, it was. So, ooh, uh, interesting. Strokey chin, strokey chin. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So this Anubis, mm-hmm. I'm trying to work out where this came from, though. Because we have we have the Anubis, it's been mm-hmm. to Phoebe, and it's possibly been with the Scopuli. Mm-hmm. And they're both ravaged, shall we say. And, okay, do we know where it's going now? Well, I, I do. Yeah, well, yeah, you do, yeah. But I'm, I'm <laughs> trying to get from, because he asked for the, the predicted flight plan, plans. We yes. didn't, didn't really get a glimpse as to... Oh, it's definitely heading to Jupiter or heading over here. So I don't think. Well, he he put in a call to uh, an old friend of his uh, asking for uh, details on the flight path. Mm -hmm. Uh, I can't remember what the guy's name was off the top of my head. Um, But, you know, he he kind of records a message and says, uh, hey, I need uh, the flight path for a ship called the Anubis or Anubis and spells it out. Yeah. And then uh, that's kind of where we leave it off there. But. He's he's connecting some dots here. He doesn't necessarily know these dots are important or connected because he's just kind of focusing still on Julie Mao. Yeah. And but, M- Muzz, is it Muzz? I, Octavia oh, um, Muzz. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. She's watching him deep diving into this and obviously suggesting, well, maybe you want to throw this up the line a little bit. This is a little bit above you. you. And he's like, well, he, he's kind of retaliating on that as well. That's well, he's, he's being defensive up. about it, mm. but I think he was retaliating to be deflective. Mm-hmm. I think he's, well, I know why he is, but I, I think what it is is a case of is he's he's falling in love with Julie. You know, he's kind of obsessing over the girl um, and he doesn't want to admit that. And so, you know, when she says, um, you know, send it up the line. Mm. He wants to keep it for himself, so he turns around and goes, "Oh, so you don't think I can do it? Is that it? Yeah. I'll show you." Because yeah, I think deep down he already knows that this is much bigger than him. Because uh, I mean, with the data broker and you know it was all military stuff and everything in there, it's like, well, that that alone kind of should flag some alarm bells. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um. Uh, no go. I, I think the next one is in the uh, the restaurant, isn't it? Uh, yeah, uh, where he meets up with Anderson Dawes. Uh, uh, okay, I we ha- we have a listener, I think, called Ollie Peters, uh-huh. and he sent me a message saying, "Why do they? Why are they eating noodles if there's a water shortage?" Hmm. There's a question. There is. Uh, mm. Are they like space noodles? <laughs> <laughs> well potentially potentially space noodles they, they might be cooked in grey water for all we know yeah that's true yeah oh man that's gonna be gross a little bit yeah 
I also think that there's a water shortage, but it's not to the extent that people are dying yet. Certainly not. You know, if you can pay for it, you know, again, they've got that beautiful garden up in the um, in the Star Helix and then the governor's uh, pad there. Yeah, it, it's, it just it's the cost goes up as well. And it's going to be things like, you know, limiting the amount of time they can shower. Um, there's going to be lots of water reclamation and things like food and drink and everything, because I think you've got to balance it off against what can they eat there's limited spaces there's no real garden space there yeah um you know there's no big domes with you know fields and plants that we've seen anyway yeah uh and noodles and stuff made out of like tofu and things are probably going to be relatively easy and they're not very intensive to well i I would say farm but to to produce there locally so you kind of have to weigh it up i suppose the amount of water needs to make the noodles compared to the amount of resources to make other foods, they go, yeah, well, it's doable. Well, yeah, yeah. If you want to boil potatoes, you're going to have to use water for that as well, aren't you? And then that, yeah, I don't know, maybe that's where the noodles are cooked in. But it's, yeah, it's rationing is, they're rationing the, the showers first off. They're rationing the big things here. Yeah. There's no people getting into massive baths over there. Also, Miller's, I mean, he's not wealthy, but he's certainly not destitute mm. or in the you know he's he's not down in the slums where you know the water's even more restricted no, no so no. I, i'm sure he can afford to pay the extra they would be charging for the the noodles mm. <laughs> <laughs> during this time of uh, uh water rationing there yeah but yeah, I mean, he, again he, if you remember last i was gonna say if you remember last week out as well they're still stopping up the tanks of ships which are coming through yeah so they've still got enough water to do that Oh yeah, there's there there is water flowing. It's just that they've had, well, they've they've lost the the Canterbury, haven't they? And so they're not oh, yes. going to get that supply. I'm sure there are other ones being directed elsewhere to to resupply anyway. It's yes. just a just a political movement to. Well, is it political? I don't know. See that that's what I'm trying to work out. I'm still trying to work out these, for a better word, others. Who these are? Who are these stealth people? I don't know. Ah, yes. I, I need to come up with a my own little word because I'm sure the internet has come up. But I, if I dive into that, I'm going to spoil myself. So I'm, I'm re, you know, restricting myself. Uh, others that. will work for the time being, I think. Mm. Uh, not to be confused with the others from the Bobbyverse books. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, and the others from Lost as well. It, it's just yeah. a, a cliche wit thing to use, isn't it? But damn yeah. it, I'm going to go for it. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so um, we met up with Anderson Dawes again, who offers to give Miller uh, the guy who killed Havelock. Well, didn't kill him, but uh, tried to kill him. Yeah. Um, it, it seems like a bribe, but is it a bribe? He doesn't ask for anything. Um, well, he, he he doesn't ask for anything, but he's he wants to know about Julie, doesn't he? He does, yes. And and last time out, he didn't admit that he knew Julie. Yeah. And this time, he not only admits that he knew Julie, but admits that she was OPA. Yeah. So he's he's balancing. He's moving his little chess pieces around. He's got uh, almost uh, a card up his sleeve, and he gives that to Miller for him to use if he wants it. He's he's he, he can use it any time he wants, but he's. He wants something in return for that. And I kind of like this Dawes guy. I love his accent. It's all over the shop, though. It really is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to pin it down. There's uh, some African in there. There's some Irish in there. There's English. It's all over the shop. It's brilliant. <laughs> I reckon if I did that in the street, I would probably be arrested or beaten up at the same time. But man. Or, or both. <laughs> yes, probably. Yes. But you'd have a lot of fun getting there. <laughs> but yeah, he's um I like I like the way way he plays this. He's he just puts it did he give him his phone or what would be classed as a phone or like a, a little projection? He gave him he, he gave him a a burner phone effectively. Ah, okay. He goes, There's one number on there and if you call that number, we'll give you uh the guy. Yeah. But he, and, uh, he yeah. takes it, doesn't he? And with with Miller, is every screen that he looks cracked? Because he was looking at that other 
screen while he was eating his noodles with a guy called Bosch Neville, I think it was. Yeah. Uh, well, Neville Bosch. Neville Bosch. I couldn't work out whether that was his first name or his last name. <laughs> <laughs> they both, yeah, he, both he seem was, to be like the first He was looking at the name. footage from the, uh, the previous one where we saw Julie beat the guy up on the docks. Yeah. Uh, no, just doing that whole policing thing we keep hearing so much about. Yeah. Um, no, I don't think everyone, I, I think his personal one's got a crack in it. I don't think everyone he's got has broken. Or maybe it does. He doesn't seem like a relatively careless chap. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon he gets given a new one and whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh. He, he, he needs to get one of those bumper cases, you know? Yeah, he does, <laughs> doesn't he? <laughs> but then nobody will be able to see what he's watching. I know, it's true. Um, no, I think the reason Dawes is offering um, the guy is the, the thug, what have you. He's is of no value to Dawes. But he wants to know what happened to Julie. Or, as I suspect, he wants to know what happened to the Scopuli. I wonder if he's... Oh, he, he could be trying to find out whether Miller's more interested in policing or his police uh, friends, partners even, than this Julie Mao. He's trying to find out where he's... Uh, where he lies on this thing. It could be that, but I think it's more that Dawes has figured out that, Anders, uh, that Miller's onto something mm. that he wants. Okay. So, so this is an OPA. This Anubis is an OPA then, is it? This One is, couldn't possibly comment. This is an OPA. The, yeah. Okay. I'm going to, this Getting could... ahead of yourself, eh, old boy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm thinking that person might pop up later in this episode. It might. It, it, yeah. it might. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he, he ends up burning that that burner phone, doesn't he? He drops it in the yeah, bin. Yeah, he kind of just chucks it, chucks it in the bin. It's just like, yeah. He makes but his I think decision. I do think that was more to just not wanting anything to do with Anderson Dawes than not caring about catching the guy um uh that did havelock because he knows the guy's still on the station yeah so yeah. he might just think well i've got more chance of getting him well i know he's here and i don't want to owe doors anything yeah well yeah if he's still on the station he can always go back it's like a chooser and adventure he's got his finger in that page ready to yeah. go back to it and he can always find out where he is later on you know the rules are if your finger's still on the page you can go back yeah exactly and if he's got more information then you can give him that and get something else yeah they're starting to play each other off now aren't they oh yeah well as you said you know we're well in truly into the game of chess here yeah you know they're both thinking three or four places ahead (laughs) yeah but he goes to see this neville guy doesn't he uh, yeah, uh, well, he goes to see Neville um, on his ship mm. um, uh, and kind of finds out that uh, Julie chartered the ship uh, and was belt hopping. Yeah. You know, kind of sticking it to daddy. Yeah. One, one in each port. Oh. <laughs> oh, hang on. No, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've got mucky mind. Mucky mind. Shame on you. I hang, around, hang around with you far too much, mate. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, she she was kind of becoming sympathetic to the OPA uh, and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and Miller kind of just, you know, explains that he just wants to, you know, find her and, you know, shows that he knows about the, the broker. And the guy's like, oh, I can't, I can't give him up. He'll kill me. But it's like, nah, I don't think so. He's uh, he's on his way to become mushroom food. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I, once again, I'm I'm getting confused with this biz guy that was along last time, who's got a couple of reincarnations. I'm still wondering: is that a name bouncing around, or is that a person bouncing around? I'm still trying to work that out. I'm not sure what you're asking. Are you asking, is the name? his actual name or is it ask me the question again <laughs> i'm trying to work out the question that i'm trying to ask but i'm okay 
I'm I'm curious as to whether this biz guy is still alive with Julie Mao or was other people using this guy's um right so the last time out uh it was the um the slingshot base wasn't it yeah is yeah no he's dead the slingshot racer is definitively dead oh yes yeah yeah uh, busy uh Biko. yeah okay so the reason uh the last time out of the guy's name was changing is that the data broker chap had a mod so every time he was scanned it would give a different name yeah and a different id one which looked close enough to him that at a casual glance you'd think oh that's him yeah so it was programmed to just give a random name to get the police off of his back and you know the one that miller picked up was uh, busy went to his place and then you know he was dead and everything well he died while he was watching it there yeah so th- the name has no real connection aside from the fact it was just a. Uh, it, it, it was just the one which came up. There, there was, there's no deeper meaning there at all. Okay. So I... the guy, the guy, Ju, the, Julie Mao's Tinder date is definitively dead, is definitively mushroom food. <laughs> right. Okay. Okay. I, I, I still think that that name might pop up later on, though. I still <laughs> reckon he might be there. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, maybe I'm just reading too much into it. I'm, I think I'm reading into the stuff I shouldn't be reading into. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, okay. I do that sometimes. But that's fine. We still love you. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, he gets told he's got to go to uh, this place called Tech Noir, um, which I discovered is uh, a little uh, Easter egg, a little homage uh, to uh, Terminator. Is that the club? Yeah. Is it? It is. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> little things like that, you know, it's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, Anyway, he, he goes there and asks for the Sherpa and he finds the guy's, you know, uh, workshop, which, which just seems a, a, a little bit, considering it was supposed to be super, super secret, it just seems to be like the door right behind the counter. So it's like, you know, anyone can, can look in there when it's open. But mm. Who am I to judge? Um, and Miller finds out that, you know, you've got all these data cards there. And I love how he kind of just scans them. You just kind of swipe them under your super phone and it kind of tells you but then he sees a little um hamster with a data slot in it and he's remember he's seen one before over in julie's place yeah so off he trots opens up the uh hamster and hey i've got a data card which he safely tucks under his hat so okay so this data card does that link how does that work? Is that when he was going into her, how, into her apartment first time round and pretending to be her and accessing her, the hamster started running because he thought that she was in the room? I think it just started. Um, I think it just started running just because it's like motion sense. It's like one of those dancing plant things you used to get, you know? Right. It just kind of. You know, it detects movement and it does it. I don't think the hamster itself is anything other than just a piece of electronics, which the guy had then modified to stick a card in. Right. Okay. Okay. But it's cool that he's got that data card now. He stuck that in his hat for that's for later on, isn't it? He's gonna. Oh, it's for safekeeping, man. Is yeah. Yeah, he's gonna well, he's walk got his... that out later. You got to justify that hat somehow. <laughs> yeah, it's true. But it's to keep his incredibly amazing haircut underneath it as well. It's true. It, it, is, it is pretty damn impressive. <laughs> it is. Okay. His haircut reminds me of, did you ever watch the cartoon droids? Oh, the, um, the Star Wars one. Yeah, the Star Wars yes. one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, in the very first episode of that, where there's two guys who are driving around some sort of speeders and they pick up, R2, D2, C3PO, and there's one dude who has half his head shaved and the rest of it is like really long and flops over his face. That's who he reminds me of. I think of him every single time I see him take his hat off. <laughs> it's brilliant though. I love it. I, I hadn't thought about that cartoon for years. And then he took his hat off. I was like, I know that haircut. <laughs> oh, there you go. Um, I, I, I vaguely remember, um, 
droids. That that is about as far as it goes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so so he, so he's got the card under his hat and he's off with a hopper, skipping a, a little, little skipping his step uh, right up to the point he's kidnapped. <laughs> yeah, he looks really happy with that as well, didn't he? He was he, he, yeah, because singing he's, he's, in the rain he's, he's, moment. He, he was singing in the rain. He was very very happy with himself. He's like, hey, I've done some police work. I've done detecting. I found the thing. I'm going to go back and order a pizza and then nope, bag over the head. Okay. <laughs> The people that have nicked him, this is what I think, right. are related to uh, Dawes, is it his name? Anderson Dawes, yeah. Anderson Dawes. They're, they're Dawes guys, and they're nicking him because they still want the information from him because they know that he hasn't made that call about the guy who stuck Havelock. That's what I think, anyway. Well, I guess we'll find out next week, won't we? Yeah. <laughs> And it must be hard, man. It really must be hard. You're just like, no, you, you're way off. You're way off. <laughs> but that's where I'm going with that. He still wants that that information. Oh, yes. And and Dawes doesn't strike me as the kind of person who um, takes kindly to not getting what he wants. We're going to have some wicked torture scenes later. We're going to have <laughs> proper, proper um, lethal weapon chained up and electrocuted type stuff. <laughs> kind of hoping anyway ah well uh, as i say you'll, you'll all have to tune in uh, next week to find out what happens but we're not done here yet no well we're done on series but we're done here now okay uh so so we're uh over on the tachi uh which we uh have borrowed inverted commas from the uh from the doninger before it went kablooey mm-hmm. um and, and we've got holden kind of ha- having a little nap minding his own business right up until a point some blood kind of just splats on his face yeah, we're in. Um, we're not propelling ourselves along, so we have no G, really, do we? Yeah, we're just tumbling. Another piece of space uh, debris, just uh, spinning between. Um, I, b- I believe the caption says between Jupiter and the belt. Yeah. So you're kind of in that kind of range. Um, but yeah, they've escaped from the um, from the explosion of a Doninger, and he's shut down the engines and turned off the transponder. And unless you look out the window and actually look at it, it's completely invisible. Mm. So, uh, so yeah, um, Lopez is dead. Alas, Paul Lopez. We are um, here. Yeah, I. Lost did... <laughs> when we were on the Doninger, I didn't know whether I liked him or not. I liked. I was still up and up and down with him i th- i liked his appearance i liked he he looked very dominating with all the slick he looks like hair. peter serafinovich <laughs> mm, yeah but it, all the interrogation i thought we were getting as you said at the end of the last episode like a band of brothers and mm-hmm. he would be like the interrogator and we've already got the the uh, the uh, someone who could repair the ships and we have our captain and we have our heavy man as well. So we're all get, we're getting into the, these little pigeonholes of people that can only do one thing, but they do that one thing very well. And I thought he was going to be like the interrogating sort of thing. And he's dead. He's dead. That's <laughs> it. And they, they put him in a bag, which w- was weird. I thought they were cooking popcorn. It just get bigger <laughs> and bigger and bigger. I was hoping that should have been the other way around. They should have removed all the air out of that. You, you know when you put like a, your winter clothes up in the loft and you use yeah. one of them vacuum bags? Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just, <laughs> there we go. And then send him out. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't quite know because I would have thought you want to remove the air because you remove the chances for um, you know any decomposition. But then again, it is freezing him as well, so... Eh, I, I don't know. Is that what was um, happening? They were freezing the body there. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Man. I mean, you know, when you pressed the button, and it all kind of, um, you know, clouded the window. Yeah. So. See now, after Havelock coming back, well, not not really dying properly. Anyone can really come back now, can't they? I'm not saying he's well, going to, and we didn't really see why he died. I think he died mostly from taking a rocket to the chest. <laughs> Did he take a rocket to the chest? Pretty much, yeah. 
Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that's gonna <laughs> that's gonna scupper your day, really, isn't it? It, it is. It's going to ruin your day a little bit. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, it, it, it's he almost dies off camera because you know obviously he was wounded at the end of the last one. Mm. He says his little uh, "I would have liked to have seen Montana" uh, moment before yep. he dies, um, and then this time he's just he's dead. Uh, and yeah, I, I I quite liked him. You know, he, he definitely in the beginning came across as a evil interrogating like hard ass. Mm. But I, I liked his little speech about how, you know, he would have liked to have seen an ocean on Mars and things like that. You know, he, he, he truly cared about his planet mm. and, you know, doing the right thing. And, he, you know, he agreed to come and rescue the rest of the um, the cancer survivors. So I think he was a good guy and it's a shame he had to die. Yeah. And they they uh, receive an incoming call. Oh, no, no. What's his name? Amos. He has got he's got like a broken leg that he's is got. Grim. He's got a bit of a bone sticking out of his leg. Yeah. And he's uh, <laughs> he's not too happy about it. <laughs> I was looking at that going, what's stuck in his leg? Oh, no, nothing's stuck in his leg. It's sticking out from his leg. It's sticking out from his leg. And, uh, yeah, um, Naomi's like, I can fix ships, not people. Sure. <laughs> um, you got uh, Alex with the um, the first aid kit, which has got that weird kind of wraparound um, uh, cast, which looks a lot like that they actually used uh, ones like that now. Uh, they're like 3D printed or something. Yeah. Uh, and they're like got holes and everything to be ultra lightweight. But this one kind of fills up with goo and hardens and kind of clamps on. I like it. He's having two. Uh, he's got the um, the anesthetic and the um, uh, the sterilizer. And he goes, which one do I? And Amos just grabs the anesthetic and just stabs it in his knee. He goes, <laughs> OK, well, that answers that question. <laughs> <laughs> Where the characters on this now, they're really starting to develop, I think. Oh, yeah, we're definitely getting a lot more of a sense of who they are because we're spending more time with them and they're spending more time with each other. Yeah. They're still developing, but it is nice that we're you know, starting to see who they are. Yeah. Um, and as I said last time, you know, they're becoming more of a character I'm familiar with. Yeah, I think once you said that, I I think I noticed the, the change a little bit. Everyone was a little bit deadpan. And playing their cards to their chest. But now they're kind of on their own. They're, they've got their own ship now. And oh, yes. they're all, it, it's like, it's like serenity really, isn't it? They have well, their was, own was, home. They, 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 they spent a lot of money on the sets for that ship and we're, we're going to see them this time. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm feeling. Yeah. Um, well, we, we got some good pans around as well, didn't we? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I love the Ross and Ante. Um but we'll get we'll get into that in a little bit. Yeah. Um, as you mentioned before, they got a message. Mm-hmm. Someone's been giving them a call, and it's Fred Johnson, who we saw last time out on Tycho Station. So how does he saying, know where they are then? He doesn't know where they are because it's a wide beam transmission. Yep. That's being sent out. He 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 he's guessing roughly where they are, and presumably because he was watching the ex, because he was watching the battle. At the time, and he's a lot closer than Earth was. You know, he would have seen um, Batachi escaping or been able to because he was watching it. Um, so he knows that Batachi's gotten away, mm. but that's just about all he does know. So he's kind of sending a message in that general direction for them to pick up. Well, yeah, he because you've got two, you've got two types of um, messaging system, three types actually. You've got wide beam, mm. you've got tight beam. So wide beams kind of, um, well, as it suggests, over a wider area. But I think if it's a wider area, it's less range. Right. It, Medi- can go, it can't go as far. Wave. Medium wave, yeah. Yep. Uh, then you've got tight beam, which can go further. FM. And then you've also got uh, laser. Um, DAB. There you go. So <laughs> you pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's a message from Fred who's effectively offering them a berth, um, you know, someone to come and to, to stay. Um, Naomi really doesn't like him. <laughs> doesn't really expand on why. It just says, don't like him, don't trust him. Um, and we're we'll left find out in that as well, aren't we? Yes. We are, we are. Um, we, we, we can definitely guess it's something to do with the OPA or the belt and stuff like that in, in given what she was saying at last time about how you think we're all the same. You think, you know, all OPA and all belters are OPA and we're all the same. Yeah. 
but we're not we're different so I, I think there's some of that going on there she's 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 feeling very frustrated on the ship because there's nothing really broken <laughs> it's state of the art it is yeah i because she walks down the corridor and it just recognizes her as a what does it recognize her as like, like a mechanic yeah and so and then she can dive into the the diagnostics of the ship is like, yeah, we're all right. Don't need you. It's fine. Come back mm-hmm. later. E- everything's tickety boo here. No problems yeah. whatsoever. Meanwhile, we have Holden walking around and he finds a coffee machine. <laughs> and, and literally comes in past. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And there was a, a beautiful moment. He was going through all the drawers. He opened up one of the doors and I know it's supposed to be state of the art. He tried to close it. It didn't quite close. It's like left the jar a little bit. <laughs> it's like, okay, that's set. Uh, yeah. yeah. Someone needs to, to kind of work on that set a little bit more and they'll have it sorted out next I, time. I, I'm sure. I really like that set as well because it's got the, um, there's this large circular window there with all the plants around it. That garden thing, yeah. A little garden thing. But yeah, I, I like that that's there. That's there partly to make it a nice place to look at. But those plants are all, um, you know, taking in carbon dioxide and giving out oxygen. Yeah. You know, it's not just pretty. It makes sense as well. Oh, it works. Yes. It works. But it, it's also, it's not like the Serenity. It's not like the Millennium Falcon. It's not like, I don't know, the Nostromo either. Well, it's it's a military vessel, but it's you know it's a state of the art. If 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 I was to compare it to anything, it's probably a bit like the Normandy or a smaller version of that from the Mass Effect games. Right. You know, it's it's um, you know, everything is there for a reason. Everything has a place. Yeah. You know, uh, it's um, very kind of orderly. You know, you've got the the decks which we mentioned before are stacked because you know you get thrust when it's accelerating. So yeah. the floors. Are all facing down towards the engine bell. Uh, you've got uh, there's like an armory with the suits ready to go and the guns and everything uh, next to the airlock. You've got um, the mess hall. Uh, you've got bunk beds for the sleeping quarters, complete with bottles of whiskey. For, um... <laughs> so yeah, it, it's, it's detached. is just a really nice, compact little ship, um, which I quite like. And uh, they finally managed to tune into the news for the first time since the count was destroyed. Yep. Uh, and they find out that uh, Holden's famous. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's, he, he is the face of the uh, the Canterbury. He is the poster boy, isn't he? A, a little bit, yeah. Um, there are you know, posters but, but, of him around. He is the poster well, well, boy. Well, they're, they're doing the Banksy thing, you know, the old kind of um, techno graffiti. Yeah. Um, uh, and that's fun. As he points out, though, you know, at this point, they're the only survivors of the Canterbury and the Doninger, which, which means no one's going to believe them. The only place they can go is to Fred Johnson. I liked that. I, do you know, I didn't even think about that until he said it. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> yeah, okay, the Canterbury blew up and you guys got away. And then the Doninger blew up and you guys got away. Hmm. hmm. Well, as uh, one of my favourite sayings, once an accident, twice a coincidence, three times is enemy action. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I love, yeah, I love the, the, the first thing they do once they, everything's calmed down, though, is turn the news on to find oh, out yeah. what's going on. Yeah, just, well, I, I, I think uh, Alex is just kind of tuning into the news because you know, he's playing with a ship. He's seeing out what he can do. Yeah. Because uh, I've got to tell you, I, I, I think our boy Alex has got a little bit of a crush going on here. <laughs> on the ship itself? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So he's our wash now, is he? Uh, well, he's, he's, he, yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, he's, he's, I, I quite like when they, um, you know, they're trying to reprogram a transponder to, to disguise who they are. Mm-hmm. Um, and they go, okay, we need a name. And he goes, Screaming Firehawk. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> <laughs> I can't work out why renaming it would blow it all up. I've renamed my horse in Red Dead loads of times. Oh, obviously you've installed the patch. No, no, it's it's uh, so the transponder uh, on the ship. It you know it tells other ships what it is. Yeah, and you don't want to be able to, to fiddle with that, to change it because um, you know pirates would do that. 
So, you know, they changed a transponder on a ship if the ship's wanted for a crime or to stay there from a company so they could sneak past defences. Ah. Because unless you have line of sight with the ship, yeah. unless you can physically see it with your own eyes, you can't really tell anything besides what the transponder tells you. Um, and what Naomi's saying is if you try and mess with a transponder, it just shorts out. It just turns to slag. That and makes more saying, sense. With a military ship, though, if you try and mess with a transponder, it might go kablooey. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, because they've got all them danger things underneath it, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah nice. We, we, we like some nice warning signs. Um, there but are the name a few fine... things with this, though, that I love. <laughs> yes. Number one is Holden. He, he they, What do they name it? Rosinante. Okay. And that means workhorse in Spanish, yes? Yes. It's a reference to um, the book Don Quixote. Okay. Uh, I think it's the name of his horse in uh, Don Quixote. Right. Once again, books. Mm. Well, yeah. Or, or if it's ever released, a, um, a Terry Gillingham film. Right. <laughs> okay. Holden punches it in. Everyone agrees on it. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't press initiate. He lets Naomi do that. Yeah. And He's about to. I mean, he's just like, eh, no. <laughs> yeah, he, he kind of backs off, doesn't he? And so it is that like a, a captain's way of, no, because she's very um and an ah about what they're actually doing. She doesn't want to go see this Fred Johnson, but yeah. she doesn't have an alternative to do. No. And so renaming it is, it's kind of her saying, okay, right, we're going to go through this. Well, you know, as Amos points out to her, you know, we've got nowhere else to go. Mm. Um, this is somewhere. And as he also points out, but with their track record, Tycho Station will probably get blown up. Mm. So, um, you know, it's kind of win-win there. Um, but I think Holden not pressing initiate is they don't have a captain. You know, they, they came to the decision by agreeing amongst themselves. Ever since they boarded the Doninger, or before that, they, you know, when Amos said to him, you know, uh, when Holden said to Amos to do something and he goes, well, you think you have a captain now? You think that means anything? Mm. No. So... As of right now, there's no captain. So he put the name in, but Naomi's the engineer. He let her push the button. I think that was just him not taking that responsibility, choosing not to be the captain yet. Yeah, yeah. Also, a Mac keyboard. Oh, of course. Yeah, I love it. It's the, the, the Martians, you know, they're, they're highly advanced species. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> but they're, they're, they're incredibly intelligent, aren't they? And uh, have yeah. gone down the Mac route, so bravo <laughs> to you guys. Oh, yeah. When their spaceships go kablooey, there's no debris fields. They, they properly go boom. Oh, yeah, they're, they're <laughs> properly broken, aren't they? There's, yeah. there, there's no two ways about it whatsoever. You are taking that to the genius bar. <laughs> um, yeah, um, and then we get a little montage walking around the ship. Uh, Holden finding the coffee beans and um, making himself some coffee mm. and Amos finding himself some whiskey. Um, Alex sitting in the pilot's chair kind of with a picture of his wife and kids and um, Naomi all on her own in her uh, in her bunk. Looking kind restless. Of well, she, she looked kind of a uh, little, little restless, a little distressed perhaps. Mm. But, uh, well, I'm wondering if she's got history with this Fred Johnson. Ooh, yeah, possibly. She, yeah, she's got history. She knows his, well, she knows exactly what they're walking into, as we'll find out in a second. Well, she, she, she's the only one that seems to know anything about him. So, uh, well, we know that Holden knows something mm. that happened about 10 years ago, which segues us ever so nicely into the last bit. There you go. Oh, tonight says, there you see what you're going on there. Anderson Station, 11 years ago. Okay, so this is running through the whole episode. Yeah, this is, you know, this is one of those kind of, I was, I didn't remember that they put the 11 years earlier thing at the beginning mm -hmm. because I thought they left it until the end. Um, that it was on this time. I was good. Well, I was going to say it, it, it would have been one of those ones if they, if they left it until the end and you'd be watching it going, what's all this going on? What's going on here? What's going on here? And then when you get the reveal at the end and then you see the 11 years later bit, it'd be like, oh, <gasps> yeah, <laughs> that would have worked better, I think. Oh. Um, but anyway, they, they chose not to do it this way. But what we're seeing here is Anderson Station. It's a uh, 
some sort of mining colony, some little station there. Yeah. And it's all kind of just shown through the um, like if you like the, the uh, their their onboard camera, and you know it's just this one room. Um, they're under siege. We established as being some sort of a riot. Mm-hmm. Uh, some executives have been killed, uh, presumably by accident, and they're just trying to well negotiate um, with the UN. Well, they they've taken control of this station, mm-hmm. and it, it's. Their kids are being poisoned, aren't they? There's there's treatment yeah. or mistreatment of the children. Well, it's it's what we saw uh, previously on Siri Station, yeah. where you know the, the the belters, the working class, you know the bottom the bottom rungs, you know, if someone is responsible for providing things like oxygen, you know the stuff that we just kind of take for granted because it's here, uh, they're going to skimp because you know it impacts their profit margin. Mm-hmm. So they've put in poor uh, oxygen scrubbers or what have you. So the children have got um, a hypoxic brain injury, mm. which basically means, yeah, uh, the brains have been starved of oxygen and it's stunted their development, yeah. which is why the girl's having trouble with the, um, uh, you know, the match to color thing. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yes, that's exactly why she's struggling with the, the color thing. Yeah, but you can see the father still loves her, mm. um, you know, quite a lot. But he's trying to do this to, you know, to stop it getting any worse and to try and help to um, to give all their children a better life. I mean, so you know, they're you know they're speaking to the UN. We're hearing the voice um, of a guy negotiating, and you know, it's basically like we're not gonna we're not gonna negotiate. We're not gonna do anything like this. Mm. Um, and then the miners are like, well, you know. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll show them. It's only been a few hours or have you. Um, and then they shoot out the generators. And it's um, it's one of those things which just keeps getting worse and worse for them. You know, they take out the generators. Then when they do try and surrender, the UN just isn't interested. You know, it won't even respond to their messages. You know, they're, and they're jamming everything. Yeah, then they're, they're not there for a a violent protest, really, are they? They're there to try and peacefully protest against their working conditions and it's met with brute force well i I think initially it was meant to be peacefully something's happened we don't know what happened Mm. but someone died and you know i may say that was an accident um but yeah the un have come to kind of just put this thing down hard yeah to stop it um and they're jamming all the transmissions so they decide to to kind of do what Holden did and try and send a message further out. Yeah. You know, the whole, if if we can get a message out there, then, you know, we'll have a voice. People will have to listen to us. Yeah. Um, And you've got the guy, he kind of, you know, he hacks into one of the antenna arrays, which is just outside the jamming range. And he starts broadcasting a message and he gets his daughter and he goes, you know, we're not bad people. We're just trying to make, you know, a better thing, a better life for them. You know, uh, the company refuses to acknowledge that there's a problem. You know, it, it won't do anything to help us. It won't install better equipment. And then it goes kablooey. Well, I think you touched on it earlier on, the the shots from inside the station as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're all, they are all, all on, well, mostly on CCTV. Yeah. And I like that look. You yeah. have that the graininess of it, and that adds to the eleven years ago as well. Yeah, it's very claustrophobic as well. Oh yeah, it's it's pretty much one room, mm-hmm. and everyone's gathered around and sitting on the floor and sitting on each other, and yeah, like you say, very claustrophobic, dirty conditions, really cramped, probably very hot in there as well. Everyone's a bit sweaty and probably a bit worried as to what's going on, and when you get struck, everyone feels it. But yeah, it's the, it's all of that atmosphere rolled into one that works. And I think, yeah, maybe they did miss a little trick as to put the 11 years ago at the very end after it goes kablooey. Well, I think that would have been because, you know, the station goes boom and you get quite a moving shot. I mean, it's the way it happens. You know, you've got the guy holding his little daughter up there, yeah. you know, pleading. And then there's the explosion. I mean, you just see the bodies. He's still clutching his daughter, floating in space mm. with all the debris. 
and then you just see the UN ship and it just zooms in and you see the guy standing there with a rifle. Mm. I, I don't know if the implication is he shot it himself or, or what, but it's Colonel Fred Johnson, uh, UN Marine Corps. And it's like, oh, so that's perhaps why Naomi's not overly happy to be going to see Fred Johnson. Yeah. The butcher of Anderson Station. And it's, I think if you stuck an 11 years later at that point, then it's just like a, oh. <laughs> that is a, oh, everything makes sense right now, doesn't it? Yeah. But I mean, they didn't really reveal it who it was. Well, they didn't reveal who it was until that point. We hear his voice. But again, you know, it's just a voice over the radio, isn't it? You yeah. know, um, and yeah, I mean, I don't know. You're like, he was clearly sent there to put that down. Yeah, you know, the UN were clearly saying, no, we, you know, we, we don't give a fuck about workers' rights, basically. You know, the spice must flow or whatever you want to call it. Um, so they kind of showed up to to put that down. And they put it down hard. Mm. Um, and yeah, so so something's happened to take Fred Johnson from the UN Marine to running a station out in the belt with OPA connections. Yeah, he's kind of... I don't know, discharged with, uh, dishonorably. That's the way I, I feel. Something went wonky along them lines, and now he's just trying to make a living somewhere else, a bit cash in hand, lots of brown envelopes going his way. He he looks haunted, though, as yeah. much as you can be when you in a spacesuit. But when you see him looking out over the debris field, he looks haunted. Mm. Like he doesn't realise quite what he's done. So... Yeah, it's it's it's. I don't want to say it's a nice little sequence because it's quite horrific. Yeah, but it 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 adds a lot to that story and informs a lot about Fred Johnson. So, getting hold of these re- kind of refugees now from the uh, I forget the name of the, what's the name of. The, what did they rename their ship again? The Rossinanti. The Rossinanti. I'm going to have to get used to that because that's going to come up <laughs> a lot. I know it. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> but he, he's going to get hold you can of call, them. Could, you, can, you can call it the Rossi for short if you want. Oh, I don't want to do that. No. No, I don't want to go down. I want to, I want to actually learn it. Come on. Okay, fine. <laughs> he's going to get hold of them as to kind of make peace with what he's done in the past. That's That's his angle, I think. That's what you think his angle is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He's trying to do that to to quiet ghosts of old. I, I again, I don't want to to, to tip hands or anything like this. Yeah. But w- one thing I think about uh, Fred Johnson, certainly at this point, is um, Fred Johnson's largely out for Fred Johnson. Yeah. Be it his well-being or his reputation or his name or anything. Fred Johnson, I think, is looking out for Fred Johnson. So mm-hmm. we're, we'll see what happens with that. Okay. But uh, we, we'll see next week when we come back for another one. Yeah. Unless you have any more final thoughts uh, for this? Uh, any any final thoughts? Let me just go through my notes. No, I'm I'm glad that people got their coffee and drinks and resting. And I like that little scene. I thought that was quite cool. But it was. I'm just glad. I'm glad I got the Rossi now. <laughs> yeah okay so okay so we are calling it the rossi okay that's fine if everyone else calls it the rossi then yeah let's go for it yeah, yeah. i like everything in this episode i thought it worked really well i thought it was nicely balanced mm-hmm. and all- it's a nice little um follow-up to cqb just you know gives everyone a chance to catch their breath yeah but i, I think we're gonna be hit hard with an earth episode now i think that there has to be a balance and maybe Earth might come back a little bit more now. Oh, it's almost like you've been looking ahead. No, no, I haven't. Honestly, <laughs> I haven't. I'm, I promise you I'm not. I'm right. really trying my hardest <laughs> not to. I, it's just the way that things are going to flow, though, isn't it? You haven't had it, any yeah. Earth, and so you're going to get yeah. lots of Earth. Well, yeah, as as you say, it's it's... Earth is very much part of his story and this entire episode, not even, not even a fleeting glimpse of it. So, no. yes, we will have to see... Uh, next time out, uh, I believe the next episode is called Rock Bottom. Rock Bottom. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, whoa. For me, that's going to be for Miller. 
is it is it going to be familiar? He's going to be beaten up, and questions are going to be asked. His mate will get out of bed and then probably marry the the lady that he's learning the language from. I don't know. I don't know. Lots of questions, and I have no answers whatsoever. <laughs> Uh, well, we can look forward to that next time out. Cool. Um, cool. Also, uh, would would Val like to plug us Val wares? Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Thank you for everyone listening to this. Uh, we have had a iTunes review, or as we said, a synopsis of what we do. <laughs> so please pop along to iTunes and give us a uh, a very uh, what what is the word I'm looking for. Oh, sorry. Just give us a review on iTunes or wherever you pick up your podcasts from. We need them. We need it to, to grow and to show it to other people as well. You know, the more reviews and more subscriptions we get, then the more people will find us. So if you're liking this, if you're enjoying it, yeah, go out and do that for us, please. You can also catch me on the Black Dog Podcast, which is blackdogpodcast.com. I'm on Shonky Lab. I'm on the Grand Prix podcast, which is coming back in a couple of months' time. And what else have I got? It's not a couple of months. We'll be back in a couple of weeks, mate. A couple of weeks, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Flix Capacitor as well. Everything that you can find that I'm on will probably be over at rogue2media.com. So pop over there, please. And you can find me also at rogue2media.com because most of the stuff I do is also with Elton. Uh, got the from the earth to the moon podcast and the band of brothers podcast uh, i also do the great derelict which is uh, great derelict.libsyn.com uh or just google it um you know go, go where you find podcasts and type in great derelict you'll find it there mm. uh got a few coming out soon so looking forward to that and uh, as elton already said there's the grand prix podcast coming back soon as well so yeah lots of lots of fun stuff for people to go out there and uh, check out and uh, listen yeah uh, yeah. yeah there you go well let's let's bring this let's bring this ship back in the dock then i guess um uh, we've done all of the plugging and everything i uh, hope you've all enjoyed it uh if you have enjoyed it you know, tell a friend get them to watch it get them to listen to it uh if you're in the uk in fact if you're worldwide uh the expanse will be back on amazon uh, on amazon prime from february 8th so that'll actually be if elton puts this out on time it'll be tomorrow yeah when will this be, comes out it? yeah so Seasons one to three will be back on Expanse on uh, on Amazon Prime, and season four is coming at the end of February. So you know, go go check it out. It is well worth your time. Yeah, you you lucky little people. You can binge watch this. I'm not allowed to. <laughs> I actually think it's better if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'll, once again, if I'd binge this, I'd have missed so much. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> I think I would have caught half of what's going on. So I'm enjoying the, the week by week. And it is week by week. I'm really <laughs> not jumping ahead at all. <laughs> oh, awesome. Well, I, I think this was the midpoint. Yeah, that's this it. Was... We're halfway through now. We're, we're halfway through. Oh, okay, so mid midpoint. What are your thoughts at this point here? Because this is the furthest you've gotten into it after yep. a few times of doing it. Halfway through the expanse. How's it sitting with you? Where, where, where are you kind of... How do you feel? I'm very happy with it. I'm surprisingly liking the the Miller stuff. Once again, if it had, had narration over it, and it was just a film. It would be all noir, and I wouldn't. It just would turn me right off. But I'm liking. It. I think it's because I'm getting small doses in between everything else that's going on. I'm liking the effects all the way through this. I'm I'm on board, and yeah, I. I want to see this till the end now. I want to see all the other seasons, but it's going to take me ages. Oh, well, uh, as I said, that's a, that's a production discussion for uh, after episode 10. Yes, that's right. Um, but yeah, uh, so, so t- tune in in about a month's time and you can find out what's going to happen there. Um, but anyway, uh, as I said, uh, go check it out. Give it a listen. Tell your friends to listen and we will catch you next week. See you later. Ta-da. Ta-da. Ta-da.